right y'all welcome back to another one today we about to be reacting to cause of growth we got that's not supposed to happen before we get into the video make sure y'all hit that sanity and subscribe let's go ahead and check this video out with me being an NBA fan for a very long time now, I've come to learn that there's certain unwritten rules that aren't meant to be broken. You know, things that are just not supposed to happen, or at least in my opinion. In this video, we're about to take a look at a few instances that made me go, hey, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I'm about to channel my inner Karen. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first unwritten rule we're going to talk about is cheering for the opposite team. Now as fans, there are some instances where you can get away with this, but only if it's for a good reason. You know, like for special occasions and stuff like that. For example, Paul Pierce receiving a standing ovation as a member of the Clippers for what was believed to be his last game in Boston. Dirk Nowitzki receiving a much deserved tribute video by the San Antonio Spurs for his final game. A seven foot forward from Germany, number 41, Dirk Nowitzki. The Boston Garden showing love to Magic Johnson when he made a surprise appearance at Larry Bird's retirement ceremony. Please welcome now the Laker player who, along with Larry, defined a new level of competitive excellence in the NBA, Irvin Magic Johnson. And many more times where opposing players actually deserved a standing ovation on the road. All of those are completely understandable. But what is not so understandable is cheering for a member of the opposite team during the regular season for absolutely no reason whatsoever other than just playing well. Saying that the Lakers and Celtics historically hate each other is stating the obvious. And one thing that just screams something that you're not supposed to do is cheer on a Laker if you identify as a Celtics fan, especially if it's not for a special occasion. On the night of January 31st, 2007, something happened that even made the announcer's jaws drop. You're seeing something that's very rare indeed. A Laker to get MVP chance right, in, Boston. in Boston. Of all places. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know Red Arbach is uh, rolling over. Not only did they cheer for Kobe, but they even went as far as to chant MVP to him. They do realize that he was trying to destroy their team, right? Which is why this was so confusing to see. Hell, I would even say that it's okay for other road arenas to maybe cheer him on. But Boston? I mean, come on, stick to the plan. You're supposed to hate the purple and gold. Well, one thing is for certain, they sure as hell didn't cheer for him in the NBA Finals just a year later. At least they knew not to go that far. Okay, I know the fans cheering is somewhat excusable, yes, even if it's towards an enemy player, because at the end of the day, they spent their hard-earned money for those seats, so we can't be too upset with them. But what's even worse in my opinion is, when the actual members of the opposite team cheers for their enemy. Believe it or not, there has been some cases where players couldn't help themselves and ended up cheering for someone on the other team. There's only been a handful of players who were actually able to provoke a reaction from the opposing bench. Most famously, of course, when Larry Bird dropped 60 points versus the Atlanta Hawks. The baseline coming out right. Yeah, be Bird. Bird, 14 seconds. Got be himself. He hit the shot. They're not going to count it. There was also that one time where Something Bird was able himself. to get a high five from an LA Clipper after draining a three right in his face. Oh, well, we didn't see it. Watch him give Bannister the sign for the high five and bats to get the back to him. <laughs> he might be the only guy who can pull off getting an opponent to high five him. 
Look, I get it. Sometimes it's hard to contain your excitement when you witness something amazing, but I still gotta stick by the title of this video and say that that's not supposed to happen. I know I'm kind of acting like a Karen right now, but wait until you hear this next story. It just might infuriate you. <laughs> Especially if you're a Blazers fan like myself. When Andre Iguodala made an appearance on JJ Reddick's podcast last year, back when he was still technically a member of the Miami Heat, he said that Steph Curry has a unique ability to turn opponents into fans. That's different because when you're in the game playing with somebody that good, like you're not really seeing how good they are because you locked in to do what yeah. you got to do. So you you missing out on like greatness by playing with greatness. That's a funny thing because when I watched Steph this past season. I caught myself being a fan a few times. Iguodala said former NBA player Evan Turner once told him that during the 2019 Western Conference Finals between the Warriors and Portland Trailblazers, Turner had to stop himself from cheering for Curry because Curry was so impressive. You know, Evan Turner was like my man, and when we played them in the Western Conference Finals, Finals, Evan was like, bro, I almost clapped when he made a shot. Like, I forgot I was playing against him. He was like, man, I had never seen nothing like that. Steph made two threes one time. He was like, damn, he good. He was, <laughs> but he was like, man, I have to catch myself. Like, oh shit, I'm on, the, I'm on the other team. I was actually pretty pissed every time Dang. the Warriors made a comeback in each game of that Western Conference final series. And to yeah, hear like that a member problems. of my Blazers was actually getting hyped watching yeah, Steph play is pretty happened. disappointing. If it's something nasty. Now here's something that I really can't wrap my head forget. around. Getting oh, booed buddy. by your very own fans. You would think that that would be the ultimate unwritten rule, but apparently some home crowds have no problem doing it. They let him play, debris coming on the floor now. We hate seeing that. Big can flies on the floor. Okay, don't get me wrong, I'm not stupid. I fully agree that sometimes there is a good reason to boo your own players. Like the time Kobe was booed on opening night in 2007 in a game against the Houston Rockets. Of course, Doug, the big story here, Kobe Bryant, who was booed when he was announced to the crowd moments ago. Just the thought Whoa. of Kobe Bryant getting booed by his own fans is certainly shocking, until you hear the reason why. If you recall, Kobe openly requested a trade just a few months prior to that game where he got booed. So Whoa. if you put it that way, them booing him kinda made sense at the time. It must have felt like a slap to their faces when the news broke that Kobe wanted out of there. So I don't really blame them. However, some boos are just completely unnecessary. When Anthony Morrow decided to wear the number one after becoming a member of the Chicago Bulls, he found out quickly that that was a bad decision. Because as we all know, that used to be Derrick Rose's number. Quote, Before the game, I didn't see anybody saying anything on Twitter or Instagram, Morrow said. And then when I sat down, I started going through my Twitter mentions and it was like crazy. Fans saying, what makes you think you can wear that? I'm like, oh, D Rose. The media told me, but I had forgot that quick. He would respond by saying, No disrespect to the fans here in Chicago. Had I known y'all felt like this Chicago about number one, him, I swear I wouldn't have chosen. I apologize. Uh, and as a result, he was forced to wear the number 11 year? instead. I don't really know how I feel else. about stuff like this, but I still think that booing your own players is absolutely wild. One. Apparently, there is one unwritten rule out there that I can't really get behind. Well, at least it's an unwritten rule to Devin Booker, I should say. There's actually multiple things that you shouldn't really do in his mind. One is double teaming during pickup games. Hey, bro, we not double in open gym, bro. I get that shit all season, bro. Come on, man. Let's work on our game, bro. Let's work on our game. Part of the game. But again, the one that I find hilarious is complaining about distractions while at the free throw line. Back in January of this year, he didn't like the fact that the Raptors mascot was trying to distract him while he was shooting free throws. It made him surprisingly upset. Collectively as a team, 
four yeah, six and the first one is good okay by the way booker's complaining about the raptor the lone fan that's there <laughs> he's been sent away aaron smith sent him away okay sure to his defense it was a close game with only about six seconds remaining so i get why he acted like that but wait larry bird experienced the same thing back in his days and he didn't really mind it at all whatsoever december 26 1989 boston celtics visiting the la clippers while bird was trying to put the game away at the line similar to booker clippers fans attempted to disrupt his free throw routine with giant blown up photos of attractive swimsuit models trying to get him to That's miss crazy. but to no one's surprise at all they were unsuccessful yeah larry says in your face <laughs> Before he shot the first one, one of the announcers said something interesting. Clippers have never defeated Boston. Let's hear that again. Clippers have never defeated Boston. Yeah, he wasn't kidding. The LA Clippers never beat Boston up until that point. We're not talking about the Buffalo Braves or the San Diego Clippers. We're talking about since they became the LA Clippers, Boston just always seemed to have their number back in those days. And as you can see, they were desperate to finally get a win against the Celtics. But not even something as distracting as that could prevent them from losing to Boston once again. We always see fans oh, do this, yeah, and most players don't seem to really care. Other than mm -hmm. Devin Booker, of course. Now, tried. obviously, there are they times when people thing. cross the line, like shining bright laser pointers in players' eyes. That's obviously worthy of a complaint. But a mascot jumping around in an empty arena really shouldn't be much of a problem. Ironically, if anything, it looks like Booker broke an unwritten rule himself, while complaining about the Raptors mascot, I guess, breaking an unwritten written rule because if you consider yourself a kobe fan like booker openly says he is then you shouldn't really have a problem with something so innocent like that kobe would never his mamba mentality would never let him get upset about getting double teamed and what you what you do you think about like so you gotta send another one <laughs> Let alone a mascot behind the basket. That's what makes this particularly head scratching. I guess the Mamba mentality is something that he lacks, and Twitter definitely let him know about it. <laughs> Alright guys, if you're interested in more unwritten rules, then I recommend you go check this video out. There should be some similar type stories in it. I'll make sure to pin the link in the comment section below give this video a like if you enjoyed and don't all right make sure y'all like subscribe and i'll be out of the next one